Hi, so I'm Brandon Gayton. I'm an engineer from the Quay Registry team. So this presentation is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be talking about us solving a computer science problem and then getting that into production. <clears throat> so this is going to be divided into three parts. First, we're going to talk about the problem that we're actually trying to solve. Then we're going to talk about how we got to the solution to this problem. And then we're going to talk about our experience in deploying this to production. <clears throat> so what is Quay? Quay is a container registry. Allows us to push and pull container images. It's currently used via two different models. So it's ran at scale as a SaaS called Quay.io. This is used by multiple open source projects, many enterprises, and it's also ran on prem by enterprise customers um, in a form called Red Hat Quay. <clears throat> so, Quay, like other container registries, have a problem where content is continually being pushed to it via users, automation, multiple sources. Eventually, that content goes stale, unusable, unnecessary, but it still stays in storage and drives up storage costs. So what we need is we need some sort of mechanism to be able to control those costs. So the most intuitive approach to solve that problem is having some form of quota management. Uh, so about two years ago, that's what we implemented. We impl implemented a way for Quay to calculate the sizes of namespaces in repositories. And then Quay administrators would be able to set warnings when they would be uh, namespace users would be approaching that limit and then limits where eventually when that was reached blocks would ultimately be stopped <clears throat> so in the sizing the first version of the sizing is sort of pretty much what it looked like so when a manifest was pushed to the registry you can see in the manifest we have the size fields within what each one of the layers so when a manifest was pushed we would add all these layers together we would store it in the manifest table in a field called layers compressed size. So now, whenever an image was pushed or deleted, we would take all the manifests that were pointed to by an alive tag, add them together, and then store that in respective namespace and repository size tables. <clears throat> so this initial version of sizing was a good start. It gave enterprise users a way to be able to control these storage costs. But there's a couple things that we could end up doing better. One of which is that we're continuously recalculating the size of the namespaces and repositories from scratch each time. At Quay.io, Quay we have over 260,000 namespaces. We have over 700,000 repositories. And some of the tables that the quota feature interacted with contains over 100 million rows. So the summing operation becomes very, very expensive. And because of this, we ultimately cannot deploy this feature to Quay.io, which is a big hindrance. Second of which, this sizing doesn't account for manifest lists. So the manifest list, it's a manifest that points to other sub-manifests. Those sub-manifests are actually contain the size of uh, the manifest. So when in this implementation, we point to that parent manifest, it essentially has no size because it doesn't have that information of the size of the sub-manifest. So the size is essentially zero. So it isn't accounted for in these totals. And the third, it doesn't account for layer sharing, which is an inherent characteristic of container registries. So layer sharing. This is what the totals look like if you don't account for layer sharing. So we have uh, three manifests. Each of them contain two layers. And for simplicity's sake, let's just say each layer is 10 bytes. So each manifest is 20 bytes. Repository A contains two manifests, so its size is 40 bytes. Repository B only contains one, 20 bytes. And the namespace, since it contains three manifests, its size is 60 bytes. Uh, but we can see here is that the layer triple A is shared between each one of these manifests. <clears throat> so those totals aren't actually accurate. Really, the real totals would look something like this. So the size of each manifest, since they reference the unique blobs, they're still only all 20 bytes. But in repository A, you can see both manifests 1 and 2 point to this layer AAA. Um, since we can identify a layer by the hash of its content, it's only stored once in the registry. And then that's referenced multiple times through each one of the manifests that get pushed to the registry. So here, its size is actually only counted once. So the size repository A is actually 30 because it only contains three unique blobs. Repository B, still 20 bytes, still contains two unique blobs. And at the namespace level, we can see that manifest three also points this layer, triple A, so its total is only counted once towards the size of the namespace. We have four unique blobs, so its total is 40. 
So a common scenario, you'd see this within namespaces if you have multiple repositories using the same base image. If that base image layer is only stored once in the registry, referenced multiple times. You don't want that counted multiple times towards your namespace total, because then it's inaccurate. And then when you pu uh, keep pushing images, uh, you want to be able to have an accurate size. So that's basically what we were trying to uh, accomplish in sizing version two. We want to be able to count for the sizes of layer sharing at the namespace and repository levels. We want to be able to include manifest lists in the totals for namespaces and repositories. And most importantly, we want to be able to scale this to Quay.io. <clears throat> so why is this such a hard problem to solve? To be able to answer that question, we have to look at the database structure of Quay. So this is a portion of uh, the structure of Quay's database. And we can see here, we have tags that reference manifest, the manifest table. Then the manifest table references this manifest blob table. This manifest blob table maps the layers in the image storage table uh, and their size back to blob IDs in the manifest blob table, which maps back to repositories, which maps back to the repository table, which uh, uh, we can identify the namespace that they belong to. <clears throat> so basically what we're trying to do here is we want to get we want to sum all the unique values for blob ID for each repository and for each namespace. We want this sum to also happen whenever an image is created or deleted. And we want this sum to happen within the realm of one API request, so it has to be done within milliseconds. The issue is, is the size of the tables that we're working with. The manifest table contains over 7 million rows. Positive table contains over 700,000 rows. This manifest blob table contains over 100 million rows. I couldn't get the uh, information for the image storage table, but that is also in the realms of millions. So it ends up being a very, very expensive operation that we need to condense down to a very short amount of time. <clears throat> so trying to find a solution to this. Um, so when we tried solving this initially, we tried going through a bunch of end-to-end -end designs. And the thing with end-to-end -end designs is that you can have something that's functionally correct, but you don't know if it's actually gonna perform well enough when you deploy it at scale. So when we went through and we tried creating a bunch of these designs, we found that functionally they were correct, but we pretty much could guarantee that they wouldn't actually scale to what we needed to. So to solve this problem, we took a different approach. We just started making POCs. And we made POC after POC, tweaking things, changing things, sometimes ultimately scrapping design, uh, the design in, uh, entirely, and then starting from scratch until we end up coming to a solution that actually solves this problem. So I'm basically gonna go through a couple of those iterations. So first iteration. So let's keep all of the code the same, but let's replace the summing with query that counts for this blob deduplication. Uh, we know that this is probably isn't gonna perform as well as we need it to, but what we can do is we can try to tune as much as we can to see if we can get something that'll actually work equate to IO scale. So how we actually get the deduplication to work is we uh, compared the group by versus distinct query, which gets the unique values from that manifest blob table. So we tested this against a namespace that contains over a million manifests across multiple repositories. Um, and then uh, comparing the performance of group by versus distinct, we saw that group by performed almost twice as good versus distinct, so we ultimately went with the group by query. And the results of this, it was functionally correct. So we have manifest lists accounted for in the total, and we have the correct sizes of namespaces and repositories. The issue is it didn't perform as well as we expected. It didn't perform well at all, actually. Um, so for larger namespaces, like I said before, namespaces with over a million manifests, uh, it took more than 30 seconds to complete, a uh, large spike in read-write latencies. Um, and then for larger namespaces, when trying to push to that larger namespace, that push would ultimately fail. Um, obviously an issue, this doesn't work, so we have to think of something different. So intuitively, if you have a calculation that runs too long to have within a single API request, you can take that and move it to a separate background worker. So with, with this, whenever an image is created or deleted, we put an item on a queue that's read from a separate background worker 
that background worker would pick up off that queue, it would calculate the size of the namespace and repository, and then store that in the respective size tables. Here, we're basically using the same query they had at the beginning, because we tuned it as, to the best we could. Um, so it still ultimately takes more than 30 seconds to calculate the sizes of the namespace and repositories. Um, but the issue here is now that the calculation is async, if you have a large batch operation where we have many images being created or deleted, the time it takes to get that total increases. So the issue here is if you have a namespace where images are being blocked, you have an indeterminate amount of time before those pushes can resume again. So because of this, this is something that we didn't want to go with. Uh, along with this, uh, we also have constant calculations running against the database. So at Queda IO, um, images are being created and deleted all the time. Um, so it's just going to be continuously uh, pummeling the database, which is something that we didn't want to bring up either. So next is the third iteration. Um, so here, we approach a problem from a, a different perspective. So we're thinking instead of recalculating the same calculation again and again, what if we used a running total? So here, we would split the calculation into two portions. So you have one portion where we calculate the size of all pre-existing blobs. So that would be a backfill. And then you would have another portion where you calculate the size of all of the blobs that happen after that point. So whenever a manifest is created or deleted, you would have this pre-existing size, and then you would just add and subtract from that pre-existing total. So the thing is here is how do you deduplicate with a running total? So to be able to answer that question, you've got to think of the event at which you would want to add or subtract a blob from the size. So the, when you, the, the point at which you would want a blob to be added to the total is when the first reference to that blob is created to, to the namespace. And you want to subtract when the last reference from that blob to the namespace is removed. So the way you can actually do that is with coincidentally the same check. You just have to check if a manifest already points to that blob within the namespace. So for addition, um, when the manifest is being added, check if a manifest already points to this blob within this namespace, um, assume it's already been accounted for the total and do nothing. And then the same thing works for subtraction. Does a manifest already reference this blob within the same namespace? If it does, this isn't the last reference to this blob, so let's do nothing. So with this, we're able to get functionally correct totals, and it's actually scalable. So what we're doing here is with that lookup, we just look up a single row lookup for each one of the blobs within a manifest. So the additional time added to the manifest uh, push, the V2 API push, um, is actually only additional 10 milliseconds on average. So with this, we actually have a way to be able to scale the calculation of deduplicated totals um, on Queda IO. So implement, implementation of this is actually fairly straightforward. Um, it only comes in two pieces. So the first piece is we have a background worker. So the background worker will start. It'll look for all namespaces that haven't been backfilled yet. It'll calculate the size of that namespace and it'll store that total in the respective table. Then it'll mark the namespace backfill for this particular namespace is complete. Then it'll fetch all the repositories in the namespace. It'll calculate the size and then store the total for those specific repositories. And then it'll mark the repository backfill as complete. <clears throat> and then the other portion is the running total. So this code will run whenever a manifest is being created or deleted. First, we do a check. Has the backfill been completed for this namespace or repository? If it hasn't, then those totals still need to be accounted. The layers need to be accounted for in that backfill. So we do nothing, return. Next, we get all the blobs that are referenced in this manifest, and then we do our checks. If the blob does not exist in this namespace, add it to a temporary namespace total. We do the check for the repository. If this, uh, if this blob does not exist in the repository, add it to a temporary repository total. Then we get the current namespace and repository size, and then we'll add and subtract those temporary totals from the current totals. And that's basically it for the implementation. Uh, it's actually fairly straightforward. So for deploying to production, like I said at the beginning, Quay is used via two different models. It's deployed on-prem by enterprise users, and it's deployed on Quay.io. 
So first, we had this used by uh, on-prem local customers. So for smaller registries, uh, ran without an issue. Perhaps we had a few bugs here and there, but largely nothing too notable. Next, for larger registries, larger customers that are running tens of thousands of namespaces, um, we had a couple issues. So one of which, we had a missing index. So there's an index required on the namespace and repository ID uh, fields. We assumed that they were being created. They were not being created. When it got deployed out, the backfill worker was very, very slow. And the, um, uh, the UI ended up getting timeouts because it tried reading that repository size, became very slow and then it would ultimately break the UI. Uh, solution to this, very straightforward. We added that missing index, got it out in a Z stream, and that resolved the issue. <coughs> the next thing was the list repositories performance. So with Quota enabled, we added the size of the repository to the list repository API. Um, with that, we had uh, a couple of duplicated um, database queries, we actually had significant impact, um, which also caused the UI to uh, time out and become very sluggish. Uh, so we just refactored that to remove those additional eight, um, database queries, and that ended up resolving the issue. So next is actually deploying out to Quay.io. Um, our main concern here is the introduction of many database queries, and some of which we don't know if they're going to perform well in all scenarios. Um, so here, we have the deployment separated into three portions. So first, we're going to enable the running total, then the backfill worker, and then we'll enable the Quota APIs so users can actually be able to see um, the sizes of their namespaces and repositories. So first, we enable the running total. Here, the calculation will uh, run for new namespaces because if there's no content to be backfilled, um, it, the code won't exit immediately and it'll start doing that running total. And here, when we deployed it out, ran fine for a good amount of time, um, and then we started getting connection issues. So pushes were failing for a portion of customers where um, there were timeouts happening from the application pods to the database. Uh, so customers were getting 500s on uh, image pushes, which is obviously very, very bad. Um, so looking into it more, we found that the issue actually wasn't caused by quota. It was actually caused by a large spike of traffic that was happening at the same time. Um, so what we ended up having to do is we increased connection count from the application pods to the uh, database, and we also enabled read replicas in production. So with read replica, we have our main database replica, and then we have a separate read-only database replica, and we moved a subset of our queries to that read-only replica. So that removed a lot of the traffic and a lot of the um, queries from the main replica, and we spread that out a little bit, and that gave us performance we needed to um, resolve these connection issues and ultimately get pushes working again. So the next portion is enabling the backfill worker. Um, so Quay runs over 40 pods in production. If we enable the backfill worker on each one of those pods, running these expensive queries, um, it would certainly cause a lot of issues. So what we ended up doing is uh, preventing the backfill worker from running on each one of those pods. And then we had a separate single pod that only ran the backfill worker and calculated these pre-existing totals. Um, we estimated the time to complete those totals in five to seven days, but actually completed uh, around two days, actually a little bit under that. So the performance of the backfill was actually much better than we thought. Um, and lastly is enabling the quota APIs. So this is just being able to read that information. Once again, the list repositories API was giving us an issue where each for each repository in that list, it was creating a separate database call. So if you had a list of 100 um, repositories, you had 100 separate database calls, which caused uh, significant issues in slowing down the UI. So we just consolidated all of those using the in database operator, and then that uh, ended up resolving the issue. So the results. So now we have something interesting, because we have a service that's been running for 10 years, over 10 years. Um, and this is the first time we actually have information on um, the storage usage within the registry. So here's a graphic. We have the size on the side, and then we have the namespaces ordered from smallest to largest. Um, this is kind of a dramatization of the real data. It's not entirely based on uh, 
the um, real information, but just trying to demonstrate the idea of the distribution of how these namespaces, namespace storage is being used. Um, so we have here is we have a large amount of namespaces that are using little to no storage, and then we start going up where we have some namespaces using a bit more, and then we have a certain portion of namespaces that are using a tremendous amount of information on the level of terabytes. Um, so what this is indicating really is that we have, well, within namespaces, we actually have two different kinds, right? We have users and we have organizations. An organization doesn't belong to any specific user, um, but all many users will join Quay just to belong to a specific organization. They don't really use their namespace. They join to be able to use the organization. So they'll end up using the organization to be able to store all their information. So you can think of it as a little bit of a hub and spoke model where you have many, many users joining, not really using anything, but they're all joining because that one organization, which is actually using a tremendous amount of information. So using this information, we kind of confirmed that this is how, um, how it's being used. So conclusion, um, Quay now supports accurate sizing at scale. What went right? Uh, I think the iterative development approach really shown here. I think if we stuck trying to create a solution, um, design a solution end to end at the beginning, we probably would have assumed that it wasn't possible and we probably would have never done this. Um, so I think it's important sometimes to just be able to start coding and start making things and start testing and um, just really trying. A common saying, I, I think it was like, follow the code. It's just like, sometimes the design won't work. Sometimes you just have to build it. And I think that's what really shown here. Um, next was identifying the performance impact. Um, so whenever we created a new query, we tested it against a pre-populated database, um, and we really tried to consider of the impact of what would happen when it ultimately went to production. And that kind of goes in the next portion too, is that we deployed in small manual pieces. Um, so whenever we did a deployment, we took a look at what changes were actually going into production, specifically the queries that are being ran we knew beforehand what metrics to look at if something were to go wrong. And we also knew, had a strategy for um, rolling back that change if something did ultimately go wrong. And uh, deploying in small manageable ch changes makes that, pro makes that process much, much easier. Um, what we do better in the future, one of which is performance testing or have some sort of strategy of replicating um, a production workload. Uh, if we had better information and a better way to test these queries, we could have got this out faster and safer. Um, and that kind of goes along with the next item too, which is Canary and blue-green deployments. So if we could have got this out earlier, once again, using production data, production information, be able to test this and see how exactly it's gonna, how well it's gonna perform, um, I think we could have been better in uh, taking more risks and being able to uh, ensure that this works and in a production context before um, getting it out there. So that's actually it for me. Was there any questions, comments? Yep. So this problem you guys had, it's like a garbage collection, right? It's reference counting, the blobs are like <coughs> actual objects, mm. and you have a name and space, and you want to tr keep track of all those, those objects, and when you're creating, someone is pointing at it. So it's kind of a reference counting problem, <coughs> and I think maybe if you look at it from that perspective and use a set, Similar to this running total you have, you might be able to get even better performance using like Redis uh, sets. Actually, um, they're mm. pretty they're pretty good optimized for such use cases. And uh, Redis sets like can have over like four billion uh, members actually. So yeah, you can easily test the membership. See, and for each blob, you can assign like a counter atomically decrease or increase it. Yeah. And as soon as it gets to zero, it's out, yeah. and it's out of the set as well. So you can easily uh, sum over the whole set. Just, just yeah. an idea, I guess, occurred to me. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's something we'll definitely take a look at. Uh, 
This is something that we got in pretty recently, actually. It was like last month. So yeah, that's something we'll take a look at and we're continually working on it. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay, well thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.